Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. So today we're going to look at some stocks. We've got Amazon. We've got Broadcom in the Semiconductor Group. We've got Visa and MasterCard in the Electronic Payments Group. And we got five big pharma stocks. So we're going to start off with Amazon because it has a breakout working. Now, part of the concern here, though, is even though we've got a clear bullish continuation pattern in that you can see there's this falling flag or wedge after this big advance. So you have this monster advance, you have a little pullback, and you've got a breakout. And that signals a continuation higher. The only concern would be is that you really you've you've doubled basically since March from 1700 to 3300. Had a little consolidation there in the middle and broke out to new highs. But this is clearly bullish as long as it holds, and I would say 3,000 is a level to watch there. So this is a valid breakout. This is the biggest stock in the consumer discretionary sector, and so that's going to help that sector. It's also a big stock in the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Now, in the bottom, I've got a couple of indicators. Uh, first of all, I've got the 200-day moving average as a trend indicator. We're way above the 200-day. And then I've got 65-day RSI, but it's invisible. And I've got the five-day SMA of 65-day RSI, just smoothing it out. And for signals, I like a move above 51 for a bullish signal. And that stays until you get a move below 49. And it looks pretty tight on this chart, uh, but we should have this available in the ACP uh, fairly soon. But basically, you know, you move above 51, RSI is clearly in the top half of its range. That means price is trending up. And if RSI moves below 49 there, the five-day SMA of 65-day RSI, if it moves below 49, clearly you're in the bottom half of the range, and that means you're trending down. Well, what I'm looking for is first we're in an uptrend. So that says my bias is going to be bullish. Then we get this pullback, which gives you the setup. And then we got the breakout, which is a signal. Uh, the second indicator is just normal 14-day RSI. And usually 14-day RSI will get into that 40 to 50 zone to become mildly oversold. But you can see how strong Amazon has been. It has not dipped below 50 RSI. So this advance continues to be very strong. So now I've got three stocks in the technology group. The first one's in the semiconductor group, Broadcom, which is AVGO. Avago is the former uh, name there. And it's got a big bullish pattern taking shape. You can see you draw some resistance right across 330 there. And you have a big inverse head and shoulders of the continuation variety. But that's really too big of a pattern for me. I would rather look at the immediate situation. And there we can see this triangle pennant type formation. So we've had a pretty big move, 250 to 330. And then we've consolidated to digest those gains. And you can see we're breaking out and on the verge of new highs. So this signals a continuation higher for Broadcom. And as far as a bigger trend, we're above the rising 200 day. There you can see RSI broke above 51 there in late May. Now we also have a situation here where 14 day RSI became mildly oversold. You can see it dipped into that 40 to 50 zone in May, and it dipped into that 40 to 50 zone in late July. And so when it does that, that tells you that you might prepare for a mean reversion bounce because you become mildly oversold. Of course, seriously oversold would be below 30. But 14-day RSI, when it gets into that 40 area, uh, is somewhat oversold. And just below 50 is mildly oversold. And that's what it did here before this bounce. So whenever RSI goes in that zone, you need to go on alert for a potential bounce. Now, the next two come from the electronic payments group. And the first one is MasterCard. And we can see here there is a bullish flag wedge, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Uh, basically, what it is, is you have a sharp move higher, a pullback, 
We got the breakout, another little consolidation, and look at that surge today up 4.3%, and it's above the rising 200 days. So long-term uptrend, short-term pullback, that's the kind of setup I'm looking for in the breakout. And there you can see RSI in that 40 to 50 zone from mid-June until mid-July. So it was mildly oversold for a little while as it corrected and then turned back up here. Another thing, you can see RSI moving above 51 there in late May, the five-day SMA of 65-day RSI. And even though it dipped below 51 maybe, it didn't go below 49. It kept that uptrend. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for signs that we're in an uptrend, and we got that mild oversold condition with 14-day RSI moving to that 40-ish area, 40 to 50, and a bullish pattern on the chart. Now, one to watch in the future would be Visa. And I think these uh, companies are pretty much in the same business. I don't know enough about the fundamental details on what the differences are, but they're both big credit card processors. But you can see Visa is yet to break out. So in that regard, it is lagging MasterCard. But it's still got a big surge, a consolidation, a bounce off support. So I would expect it to break out and move higher. And again, we're above the rising 200-day. You can see RSI, the five-day SMA of 65-day RSI, moved to about 51 in middle-late May. And then we got mild oversold conditions in 14-day RSI, touching that 40 to 50 zone as the stock consolidates and bounces off 190. And of course, if you'd like to know more about this RSI strategy, you can go to trendinvestorpro.com for subscribers. I've put together a video. Also, if you're a Sock Chart subscriber and you subscribe to trendinvestorpro.com, I'll give you, I'll send you my master ETF list with over 200 ETFs and the essential breath indicator chart list. And upon sign up, you'll get immediate access to everything. And there are a lot of archives and longer term articles and videos, including this RSI for trend following and momentum. And I back tested this on stocks in the S&P 500 going back to the year 2000. So check it out if you want to learn more. Now I want to turn to four stocks in the healthcare sector, SBDR, that are making moves that could be poised to make some pretty significant breakouts. And these four are quite important because they are the four biggest stocks in the sector. So I'm here at the SPDR website looking at the holdings. You can click holdings and it'll take you straight down. But they're the top four holdings, Johnson & Johnson, United Health, Pfizer, and Merck. And you can see that all told, they make up about 28 plus percent of the ETF. So wherever they move, the ETF is seriously going to be influenced. So we're going to start with Merck. It is on the verge of a trend reversal. And the, way, the reason I say on the verge, because there you can see it's right at the 200-day. And the five-day moving average of 65-day RSI is at 50.9. It's on the verge of breaking above 51, which would be a bullish development for the trend. And then you get above the 200-day, that would also be a bullish development for the trend. And we look at the price chart, what I see is a, a big surge and then this zigzaggy kind of pullback. And it looks like, you know, some sort of a, a falling channel. And it looks like we're trying to get a breakout there. So you have a surge, a correction, and we're on the verge of a breakout. And that could open the door to a challenge to those December highs. Now, the next stock in healthcare is going to be Pfizer. And everybody knows Pfizer, the big pharmaceutical company. It is stronger than Merck because it is in an uptrend already. First of all, you can see it's above the 200-day moving average. Second, you can see that the five-day moving average of 65-day RSI moved above 51. Now, you can see that Pfizer has been going nowhere. It's been going above and below 36 since, well, for a year now, basically. And that means when you're not trending, your trend-following indicators whipsaw. 
one point, a trend will take hold and last. We don't know what that point will be. Uh, but if I look at the chart, it's looking like it could be a big reversal in the making for Pfizer. So what you've got here is you got this first big surge, and then we got a pullback, and we formed a higher low. And then we got that gap up, pulled back another gap. So we got two breaker gateway gaps, actually three there, three breakaway gaps. And we're challenging this resistance level here from these highs. And I would expect a breakout. And that would mean you'd have a higher high to go with this higher low. And that would reverse the bigger downtrend and you'd be above the 200 day moving average. And if you look a little short term, you know, you got some sort of consolidation going on. You got a big advance, and then you're kind of stalling here. And maybe it's a little pennant, and a pennant breakout there would be bullish. The other stock is the big one, Johnson & Johnson, the biggest holding in healthcare. And it's got a similar kind of pattern, but it's above the 200-day. So you can see it went below the 200-day in March, back up in April, and then hit a new high. And then we got this pullback. And I'm sure if you put on your Fibonacci retracements, this would be around a 50% retracement. So you have like two steps forward and one step back. And you tested the 200-day, and you held that 200-day with a bounce and a breakout. So I think this is a bullish configuration here, this bigger breakout. And then shorter term, you have a surge, and then you have this pullback, and we're trying to get a breakout right now, and RSI is trying to bounce off that 40 to 50 zone. So America is looking like it wants to continue higher. And then we do have one more, United Health, and it is also in an uptrend overall. And you can see it hit a 52-week high in June, and it's kind of consolidated. So you have this big surge, and it looked like we were breaking out there, but we fell back. And now we've got another consolidation, but right now it looks like we're breaking out of this consolidation, and I would expect that to continue higher and hit new highs. And there again, you can see RSI bouncing off of that 40 to 50 zone. So United Health probably looks the strongest of these four. So since we're on healthcare, I'm also going to take a look at Eli Lilly. It is the 10th biggest holding in the healthcare sector, SBDR. It's around three and a quarter percent, but it hit a new high there in July. So it is one of the leaders and it's got an interesting mean reversion setup going here. So first of all, we can see the breakout there in December, a lot of volatility, but you know, ultimately a higher low and then a higher high, another higher low there and another higher high. So where are we at now? Well, we've had this big surge and we've had a pretty deep pullback. It's probably overshot the 61.8% retracement, come back into this gap zone. But I would suggest there's going to be some support in this 145, 150 area if we're going to keep that uptrend and have a higher low. And you can see RSI is down around 40 now. It almost hit 30. But this is one to watch for a potential mean reversion bounce to continue the uptrend. All right, so that concludes this edition of Next Level Charting. I'm Arthur Hill from TrendInvestorPro.com. Thanks very much for tuning in, and have a great day. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.